Hey everyone, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with a project update video for this 1-6 scale ArmorTech radio controlled Russian T-3485. Since the last video update, I've been working on the vehicle's external bodywork as well as developing some other external detail fittings like the bow machine gun, the hatch, and all those good things. But right now those are still in research and development and with any luck by the next video update drops, I should have some of these features starting to be mounted to the model and start fleshing it out. Also, just like I mentioned in the last video, the mantlet functions are fully functional at this point. And just like I mentioned in that other video, with the turret now at this point of its progression, I need to see if the track tension is where it needs to be. And in order to do that, the model at this point is ready for a test drive. This video is a tad bit overdue. I have test driven this model once before, but at that point, the model was in a much more unassembled state compared to the way we have it here. In that video, the interior functions were not fleshed out at all, and basically it was just jury rigged in order to just get the thing running. Fast forward to the point that we have here, all of the interior functions have been fastened to the vehicle, and the vehicle now has its dedicated 24 volt battery. As for why I went with the single 24 volt as opposed to the two 12 volts hooked up in series, well, I go over that information in the video where I discuss the interior layout as well as also the mechanical systems. One other thing I want to mention is that the vehicle does have its sound system installed and I do have it in a position where I can fire it up. Unfortunately it's not fully calibrated with the throttle so I'm not going to be running it with the sound system. The sound system is something that does need to be calibrated and I'm going to be outsourcing this facet of the build to an individual who is far more knowledgeable and qualified in doing that aspect of the build compared to myself. So. With all that out of the way, let's go ahead, get this thing fired up, and see if we'll be able to churn up ground and do it in a way that is in a reliable manner. <laughs> yeah, that was a bit of a bump. Let me go ahead and take that, take care of that.
go a little bit slower over the speed bump. There we go.
Well, I think it's safe to say to call that test drive a complete and utter smashing success. This thing ran and it ran absolutely perfectly. Well, starting with the running gear, all of the modifications that I touched upon in earlier videos all worked according to plan. There was not a single surprise with that. The track tension proved to be absolutely flawless. I am not going to touch the track tension at all. The way you see it is the way I'm going to keep it on this build. Even the track links themselves held together extremely well. Keep in mind, at this point here, we have the master link that's not fully seated in all the way. And the link, or I should say the pin itself, didn't work itself loose or cause any sort of problems. It stayed exactly where it needed to be, and that's going to be great. It's going to work even better at the end of the build when I put the final retention pin in to keep it in place. But other than that, I mean, I literally couldn't ask for anything more of this model. Without any sort of hiccups, it ran fantastic on both on and off-road conditions. While going off-road, I took this thing and I ran it hard. I ran into places where I typically don't run my models and this thing just went through it and kept on asking for more, which I guess is exactly what you're looking for when you're working on a vehicle like a T34. Hopping back to the run gear, the one aspect of this build that I was a little cautious about and I wasn't sure how well it was gonna work in practice was with the modifications that I made to the sprocket. As we can recall, the sprocket went through an extensive upgrade process in order to bring it to the condition that you see here. What you see here is the original kit CNC sprocket, and then on the outer extremity here, we have a 3D printed detail face. The piece is attached to the sprocket via adhesives as well as several fasteners. In fact, you can see the fasteners right here that were modified to have this outward appearance. And at the time, I was a little cautious or I wasn't really sure on how well this part was gonna hold up with use. I mean, there's a difference between having a 3D printed component like a hubcap, as well as a 3D printed component that is really, all intents and purposes, part of the sprocket. You know, the sprockets on a rear control tank like this need to be very, very robust. They need to be strong enough to propel the vehicle, and they also need to be durable enough to take whatever dirt, debris, and foreign particulate gets kicked up by the tracks. And granted, the majority of the sprocket is still the CNC aluminum one, so that wasn't gonna be a problem, but I was cautious on how well this was gonna hold up with wear. And I think we can safely put that concern to bed because these parts here look absolutely stunning and they look as good as they did when I first installed them on the model all those videos ago. One other thing that was proven to me in this video was the viability of the single 24 volt lithium ion battery. On previous builds, I would have a dual 12 volt battery setup hooked up in series, giving you your needed 24 volts. But with this one, because of the constraints of the dimensions of the hull, the single 24 volt battery was used in place. And I gotta say, it has blown away my expectations completely. The single battery here does streamline the build quite a lot. First, the design for the battery tray is much more simplified compared to a battery tray intended for a two battery system. The electrical hookups are another win for this type of system because this is extremely simple. With the two battery hookup, you need to have that bridge wire going between the two, and then you need to have a separate charge source for both of those batteries. Even though you have them hooked up in series, you still can't charge them fully in that format. So you have to charge them individually. This all adds extra complexity to the model's electronics. For this one here, that's not the case. You just have one single plug and you're good to go. Now, the one drawback of the single 24 volt lithium ion battery is cost. These batteries are significantly higher compared to the standard 12 volt lithium ion and are way more expensive compared to a lead acid counterpart. However, in my opinion, this system here is the best way to go. You, you pay once, and you're good to go. You don't have to constantly recharge, or I should say replace the batteries as the model ages, as you would on something with a lead acid type system. And with the lithium ions, they do last about a decade or so. So you pay once, you cry once, but you'll be having a functioning model for over a decade to come. Well, from here, the model's gonna be fired back up and driven into the shop, but this time it's going into the other shop where it can spend the remainder of its build on the hydraulic lifts. This model now is far too heavy for me to bring it back into the shop it was previously, and trying to take this thing up and downstairs, eh, it's a bit problematic, so <laughs> let's go ahead and get that taken care of. But 
From this point onward, that wraps up this project update video for this 1 6 scale radio controlled Armortech Russian T3485. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to this channel where it's a great way to keep up to date on new posted content, being project update videos like this one over here, or the other smaller scale model showcase videos that frequently get posted to this channel. Another way to keep a loop of new posted content is by liking us on Facebook. There, I have more photographs of this particular build that have been posted since the project start, as well as the other smaller and larger scale builds that have been seen on this channel. Furthermore, don't forget to swing by eastcoastarmory.com for more 1.6 and 1.16 scale builds and detail components. Thanks, and I'll catch you all again on the next one. Das Vidanya.